Genetically Modified Mosquitoes is going to be the talk tonight. Um, and some people call them GE mosquitoes, some people call them GM mosquitoes, GMO mosquitoes, it's all the same thing. It's genetically altered, genetically modified. The genetically modified mosquitoes are Bill Gates funded. They are uh, have been in the works since 2011. And um, they have been trying to push them through in Florida and Texas for some time, but it hasn't really worked out. The, the people of Key West in a particular community voted them down, and um, but they still found a way to weasel their way in. They, they found another community to do a vote on, and they're actually going to be putting boxes in people's backyards that contain hundreds of millions of mosquitoes. So for the people that are like, yeah, you can put this experiment in my backyard, their entire neighborhood is now the experiment too, because now hundreds of millions of mosquitoes are going to hatch in this box, and they're going to start flying around. We don't know what they're going to do to the environment, the ecosystem, uh, other mosquito species. <clears throat> we don't know what they're going to do to us. They claim that they're not releasing biting females, but um, as I hope we get to discuss tonight, that is a lie. And they actually got caught lying multiple times, this company, um, about releasing females, about how long they would survive past adulthood. And they, their experiments in Brazil and, and Panama and the Caymans did not go as planned. So as you know, and they try things in other countries and then they bring it over here to America. Um, the biggest question people ask is about if they've been released or not yet. They have not been released. So many people say, oh, they, I knew they, they got released last year. I, um, I saw they were released a year ago or no, none of, unless they've been secretly releasing them, um, which we can't verify anyway. There's been no official release. They were approved last year, and they just got officially set for release in April. And, um, you know, right now they're actively looking for people's backyards to put them in. Um, the worry about releasing females is they're the biting ones, so they can bite us. So then you basically have um, genetically modified mosquitoes with E. coli, the herpes virus, fruit fly DNA, moth DNA, a whole host of things, uh, viruses, bacteria, foreign DNA, all in one mosquito biting us, biting our pets. We have no idea what this is going to do to us. So. In theory, they are supposed to protect us from Zika, save us from dengue fever, which we'll talk about how much is an actual threat. Um, the real reason, uh, I mean, that's speculation. I don't know why, but maybe it's just to sell their product. Uh, you know, maybe they want to use them as flying syringes, <laughs> which if you want to Google um, vaccine flying syringes, Google that or DuckDuckGo that. Um, Jenny, yes, it's pretty much a done deal. You know, it's unfortunate because it feels like our efforts right now are a little too late too little too late but it's it's never you can always get the experiment shut down i mean if we catch them lying again if we catch them releasing females if um something happens you know goes wrong with this experiment then you can definitely uh we could get it stopped it's not over even though it's been officially approved yeah they were um they just got approval a week or so ago, but they haven't released them yet. They're looking for people's backyards to put them in. Well, thank you so much for um, coming on and talking to me tonight. Um, I was just telling people how, you know, I really wanted to talk to somebody down in the Florida Keys who's been on the front lines of this fight, you know, for some time. So um, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Can you just tell me like a little bit about, just tell us where you're from, obviously, and how, how you got involved with this and how long you've been at it. I live on Sugarloaf Key in the Lower Keys. It's about mile marker 20 on um, on US 1, Highway 1 in the Florida Keys. So there's one road in and one road out. Um, I first heard about this issue um, in 2011. Um, I worked at the local college and as such, I could take college coursework for free or tuition waived as part of one of the benefits of working there. So I took an environmental biology class and the, um, the presentation was by the Florida Keys Mosquito Control, and they were talking about Oxitec mosquitoes, 
and I asked a lot of questions that the representative could not answer during her presentation in the classroom. And I asked for mm -hmm. copies of the slides and I asked for her contact information and I never heard back from them again. And I thought, you know, that's really too bad because, you know, maybe this is finally a GMO technology I could get behind. And, um, and, and the more that I read and, and researched on my own, instead of just answering my questions and, and following up and connecting and engaging with me, um, someone interested in the science um, and, and, and responding positively, like, this is really, you know, fascinating. It, it, could, be, it could be wonderful. Um, no, I never heard back from them again. So I just started doing my own third party independent research. And the more I researched, the more questions that I had. So that started in 2011. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I got into this around, I guess, 2014, I would say, um, when I when I kind of got uh, privy to it and started raising awareness myself. And I'm here in Orlando. And it, for those that don't know, the plan is to release them in the Florida Keys. That has been the target. Uh, Texas was also a target. But that's I think that's been put on hold for now. Is that correct? Texas isn't, isn't doing it. But Florida is. Um, and, you know, there is a long history. We could probably do a whole nother talk on Oxitec themselves. So, um I, We'll set them to the side for right now, but um, so let's just kind of lay out the, the basics really quick for them. What exactly is the genetically modified mosquito? What's it made of and what is its like official purpose? Well, these are, these are an invasive mosquito. The Aedes aegypti mosquito are an invasive mosquito to the Florida Keys. So let's start with that. Mm -hmm. So this British company, Oxitec, has created these mosquitoes. Um, they, they basically have taken um, wild strains of mosquitoes, Caribbean and Mexican um, mosquitoes, um, and, and they've, they've introduced different DNA fragments into, into them. And uh, there's a piggyback transposon gene um, that is highly unpredictable, for example. Um, there's red coral, um, herpes virus, E. coli bacteria, and it's just short, DNA segments. It's just short segments of the DNA sequences. However, when you put them together and they interact, they interact unpredictably. And um, there are some problems with the science, which we can go into in a, a minute. But um, but that's basically what it is. Um, and and they're they're a weaker. Um, they're basically weaker because of all of this um, manipulation of them. And they're raised in right. tetracycline, um, and 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 then basically they're put in the eggs are put into boxes that they're providing to resident. They will be providing to residents to put in their yards, and then the mosquitoes. Once there's some rainfall or water added, just just add water, and you can have these friendly mosquitoes released in your yard. Oh my gosh! I mean. If we're already not going through a situation where we're sort of an experiment, this is another one. I mean, we and I just want to stress to people, you know, we're not against like all innovative technologies. We're not against all GMOs. But when you have a company that has the likes of Monsanto, you know, dare I say it, with lying to the public and doing shady things, putting our health to the side and putting their products first, we have to really be skeptical. And I think that you know, the biggest thing that we want to drive home is the unintended consequences, the unknowns. And I think you would agree that that is our biggest problem here. We're not necessarily against this. You know, if there was a true threat, um, I think that maybe we would, you know, entertain this idea. And I guess on that point, is there a real threat? I mean, this is, this is supposed to protect us from Zika and dengue and other uh, mosquito-borne illnesses. But are people really dying in droves? Do we really need to, to do that down in the Keys? No, we currently have no Zika, no dengue, no chikungunya. We do not have any of the four serotypes of dengue in the Keys right now. And you can go to our, um, you can go to the Department of Health website and you can see that for yourself. So anything that I say here, please do not just believe me, just research for yourself. Um, so, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of problem with this. First, first of all, just let me say, you know, we would, we don't like mosquitoes. We're not the save the skeeters committee. Um, right. We, we don't like <laughs> them either. And we understand that they are a vector. They carry diseases and yes, they are a dangerous animal. The mosquitoes are dangerous. They do carry these horrible diseases and nobody wants to catch any of these diseases. 
and nobody wants to spread these diseases. So, you know, let's, right. let's be clear about that. We have the same goals. We all want to kill mosquitoes. However, we have, a, in, in contrast to what the experts are saying, we do have a lot of tools in the toolbox that harbor far fewer risks. So there's the irradiated insect technology, which is being utilized in Lee County, Florida, with documented measurable success and no controversy. And then you have the, and those are basically like microwave mosquitoes, okay? Similar concept, the sterile males are released into the environment and then, you know, the wild females mate with them and then there's no progeny, okay? We have no problem with that technology. That sounds fantastic. In Miami-Dade County, they're utilizing Wolbachia bacterium with documented measurable success. And again, please, go to the websites for Lee County Mosquito Control and Miami-Dade Mosquito Control. Look it up. Do the research. Well, Bakia has been used in Australia for decades, and it, they reduce their dengue with it, and it caused no, no unintended consequences to the environment. Oxitec, however, has created this junk science, and the, the genetic manipulation of the mosquito creates a whole window of opportunity for all kinds of things to go wrong, including an, an increased opportunity for transmission of the very diseases that we are trying to eradicate. I need to let that sink in because of several factors. The tetracycline that's used not antibiotic resistance, which over 30 medical doctors in the Florida Keys have signed a letter against because they're concerned wow. about it. And Oxitec will not allow our physicians to do a swab test to ensure that there's no tetracycline in the boxes enough to cause considerable antibiotic resistance in our community, a threat to our public health because we have a significant amount of MRSA and Staphylococcus bacterial spread here in the Florida Keys. It's horrible. It's in our hospital. It's in Lower Keys Medical Center. I mean, you can come out with a staph infection from our hospital. I mean, surely you've heard of these things. So again, right. don't take my word for it. Research what I say. Absolutely. So, okay. So, so you have the, the tetracycline risk. Okay. Then you have the fact that these mosquitoes in the presence of type tetracycline, they're supposed to die if there's no tetracycline around because they're raised in the tetracycline. There's tetracycline in the eggs, in the box. If there's no tetracycline present in the environment, they are intended to die before they reach mating age. Adulthood. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to die. Any females that hatch are intended to die before, in the larval stage, before they reach adulthood and can mate. Now, has anyone tested our environment down here for tetracycline? No. Nobody has tested any of the brackish water, any of the standing water. There are um, sewer containment systems around. They're switching over the sewage systems now. They have deep water injection wells, shallow water injection wells. There's, um, there, there's, there's missing science, okay? There are missing studies. Why is this important? Because if there is tetracycline in the environment, females hatch and are introduced to tetracycline in the environment, then they can be, they can mature into adulthood, okay? And that's right. when you have a problem, okay? That's when you have a biting genetically modified mosquito. The only reason it was cleared through the EPA and any other regulatory agency that Oxitec says they were, they, they do not have the support of the CDC as they say that they do. They do not have mm -hmm. the support of the FWC as they say that they do. The Oxitec marketing narrative is completely different from the truth. And you will find that in the Caymans, in Brazil, in Panama, in India, in Malaysia, in every country that they've ever been in and been kicked out of, they're not continuing right. these experiments. So when you have these female biting mosquitoes biting people, that was not accounted for in the EPA re review, which is deficient because they did not review all of the science. They were lobbied 
by an Oxitec lobbyist, at least one that we know of, by the name of Roy Bailey. And the released emails, 70 pages, are posted on the Facebook Florida Keys Environmental Coalition Facebook page, and it's public access. Anyone can look at that. Anyone can read those 70 emails, just like I did, and see the undue influence of corporate Oxitec on our regulatory process. So there was no fair regulatory transparent process. We had a public comments period in October of 2019. Over 31,000 public comments were opposed to this technology and only 56 comments were in favor of it. So did the EPA really take that into account? No. Six months after the public comments period, they released an approval and 12 more pages of information on their epa.gov website that was not available during the public comments period. So, it, just, not, not to cut you off, but it, I just, there's so much to unpack there. It's your 30,000 comments and only 56 were in favor. So that is not wanted clearly by the public. You just explained how dengue and Zika are not a threat, not needed and it's not tested we literally are the experiment where we're releasing this like i said the kind of crazy statement the bill gates back gmo frankenskeeter that's what it is bill gates has ties to oxitec they are creating a jurassic park bug like you said with herpes and e coli and fruit fly and moth and releasing this in our backyard and you know you talk about i, I sat through a oxitec presentation in orlando one time and i heard the the gentlemen go up there and repeat the same lies. And you know, just like Megan is saying here, this is not our opinion. We found out about a lot of this information from Oxitec's own documents, from emails, failed experiments. I mean, they're the type of company to open a secret lab in Marathon. They're the type of company to literally tell the public one thing and other things are happening in their documents. And it's just upsetting to see. Um, the three big things that I remember them lying about was the releasing the females, which let me just kind of, just so everyone knows, we have a Zika mosquito, which is, you know, big scary thing they're trying to stop, the problem. And the solution they're offering is to genetically modify a mosquito to mate with the Zika mosquito. And then it has a sort of kill switch, if I'm not, if I'm correct, like a kill gene, Dot, the Zika mosquito dies off. And then the genetically engineered mosquito is supposed to not survive past adulthood, but like the tetracycline points you just made, there is no proof that these things couldn't potentially survive and then come in and do what? Maybe they create a, a more invasive mosquito species. Isn't that another one of the big concerns too? Absolutely, because anytime you hybridize a, a biological species, you, you usually end up with a stronger hybrid. And that's why Right. That's why hybridization exists in, um, you know, in, in agriculture and a lot of different other um, uh, fields. So, so you're going to end up yep. with a stronger mosquito that's harder to kill, and then they're going to have to buy more chemicals to kill it because they're not going to stop the spraying during this experiment, nor will they stop the spraying after this experiment. Basically, it's right. part of a multi-prong approach to mosquito control. And they have to continue spraying the adulticides while they release the genetically modified mosquitoes. Contact Andrea Leal, the director of Florida Keys Mosquito Control, and ask her about the spraying of chemicals during the Oxitec mosquito control during, the, during this trial. Ask her about it yourself. Um, right. They're not going to stop spraying chemicals. And, and that's, that's just a fallacy. That's just greenwashing. Yeah, and it, I've heard them also talk about, you know, we, we all know very well that if it creates a more invasive species, who's going to pop up and say, well, we've got another genetically modified mosquito product for that problem. They are. And that's probably what they're planning for, because if that happens, then they have a whole nother problem to tackle and they already have the pre-planned solution. You know, it just sounds all too familiar of no consent, doing things in secret. You know, and that's one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to bring you on was because a lot of people know about the genetically modified foods. A lot of people know about the stuff in our water. Obviously, the vaccine is like the biggest topic right now. Nobody knows about genetically modified mosquitoes. You know, I ask people about this and they say, wait a minute, where are they releasing that? I didn't know that. Or they say, oh, weren't those already released? You know, people have no idea what's going on with this topic. It has really been swept under the rug. And 
as we know, the pandemic has really done a good job of sweeping things out of the limelight or out of the spotlight because that's the only thing dominating the news cycle. So um, this is so underreported that people need to know. I mean, what can you talk a little bit about how it was potentially stopped? Like we, we basically voted it down in one of your communities, but then they found a way to still get this approved. Can you talk about how that happened? Can, actually, can we come back to that? Can you hold that thought? Yeah. I, I really would like to address why this is important to everyone out there watching and everyone interested in yeah. this subject, because it's not just about the Florida Keys and it's not just about Florida and it's not just about Texas. This company, this right. is their premier um, debut in the uh, United States marketplace. Um, this is their their entrance. Their, this is their way to get in. They have released a brown moth in upstate New York and Cornell University asked them to stop. That was not a biting insect. Um, I, I wouldn't have approved of that, but it's also not a biting insect. Now, now this, once they do this, they have a lot of other insects in the pipeline, folks. And your town, your community is going to be next. This is a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation. They're known as Third Security, they're known as Precision, they're known as Intrexon, they're known as Oxitec, and Randall J. Kirk. Also, they're responsible for the genetically engineered salmon. They're responsible for genetically engineered apples. They're responsible for a lot of things that might surprise you, like a methane product that failed, which is now currently facing a class action lawsuit for losing stakeholders in excess of $100,000 each because the company that Randall J. Kirk is responsible for made fraudulent claims at all relevant times about the value and efficacy of that product. We see the same pattern, the same trend with this other Randall J. Kirk product, again, as you said, Justin, which, is, um, which was originally supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They pulled away from Oxitec. Again, this is about 10 years ago. Sorry, this is a little bit of history. Um, they pulled out, they created their own genetically modified mosquito, took it to Africa, met with a lot of resistance over there, backed away from the mosquitoes for a little while, and now they're back, you know, supporting Oxitec again. So I just wanted to get that back in there. And then let's go back to um, what you were saying about how this, I, I think if you could repeat your question, that would be helpful. No, that's really good to let some some people know. We need to know who's behind these companies and some of the backstory. So I think that's really important. Um, what I was talking about was, um, can you just kind of explain how this was stopped because a community voted it down and then they found a way to, they, from what I saw, it was like, okay, well, this community was super focused, super focused. They stopped it and they were like, we'll just go do it over here real quick. And they did that and they, they got it through. Is that what happened? Yes. Okay. So originally... Florida Keys Mosquito Control was going to release this technology without any regulatory oversight whatsoever. In 2011, they were going to just say, okay, here we go, let's try this out. Well, because we were aware of it and started hosting um, public information and engagement workshops where we, in, we invited panelists who were scientists and elected officials on both sides for a fair and balanced dialogue, um, for example, at the Harvey Government Center in Key West, where we had about 150 um, participants. We still have, you know, we have the videos of those, you know, it really happened, and people really vehemently opposed it. Basically, Oxitec was laughed out of Key West, okay? Wow. And, and, and furthermore, the city of Key West at the time um, passed a resolution uh, in opposition to a release if certain criteria were not met. That was 10 years ago and those criteria have never been met. So they are not releasing in Key West. If you notice, the um, trial release area is mile marker 10 to mile marker 93. Key West city limits do not extend up to mile marker 10 or past mile marker 10. Key West zip code stops at 33040 on, 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 on Geiger Key. Um, so we have, we have a problem. Um, so, so, so then they decided, okay, well, you know what? If Key West doesn't want to do this, we'll do this in Key Haven. And so this must have been around 2013 because the, the resolution was passed in 2012 in Key West that we don't want this. Then 
-hmm. Syntec and Mosquito Control said, oh, let's do this in Key Haven then, which is a nearby um, island, uh, you know, next to Key West. Uh, but they're not incorporated in Key West. It's not, it's not like within city, you know, city proper, as they say. So with a lot of outreach and public education, and a lot of public engagement too and asking people point blank like what what is it that you like about this technology and what do you support about it and finding out that what people liked about it and what people supported about it was actually not factual it was actually based on incorrect information um we had a lot of interesting i was one of those volunteers who canvassed the neighborhoods in key haven along with mila demir and a host of other volunteers we went door literally door to door and and this was i mean clearly way before the pandemic when you could do those things um right. you know and and so in a pandemic year you know they passed this approval in 2020 they signed the Occitec contract but anyway so when key haven residents were vehemently opposed you know we basically said look you know and they kept pushing and pushing and pushing and we said well put it out to a vote can we vote on this now, in my force a referendum, there's, there's no, you have to ask nicely for it and maybe you get it, maybe you don't. In this case, we asked for a referendum and Florida Keys Mosquito Control considered it and then said, okay, we'll give you a referendum, but it'll be non-binding. What that means is, whatever the results are, we don't need to do whatever you say. Okay. Okay. Point number one. So we'll give it okay. Fun, so, so oh, <laughs> point number one, and then point number two, they said, okay, you know what? We'll give you your referendum in Key Haven, but we're also going to open it up to the entire county. Now, if you've done a lot of grassroots effort, and 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 I know you have, Justin, and a lot of people watching have done a lot of grass. If you focus your it, your attention in one area in public engagement and education, you know, and you're not because they had their tar the target was on their back in Key Haven. The target was on their back for a trial. The rest of Monroe County was considered safe at that point because we weren't going to do any. So Phil Goodman, the chair of Florida Keys Mosquito Control Board, and, and the Mosquito Control Board, um, Jill Kearney Gage, um, Tom McDonald, um, Stan, Dr. Stan Suba, they decided, oh, well, let's open it up to a countywide referendum as well. Well, Key Haven, the results of the referendum in 2016 were that Key Haven soundly, soundly defeated it. They didn't want this experiment, right? And then the rest of Monroe County kind of voted for it, but like by a very slim margin. A lot of people that we talk to now, five years later, don't remember that referendum that live here and, and they don't, and, and furthermore, they don't know that it was based on a previous prototype. So the referendum from 2016 is based on a different technology. The OX 513A, yeah. which now they're using the OX 5034, and they're not releasing any information about the DNA sequences as they did with the previous prototype. So when we look up in the allergen, when we are you still? We look up in. Yeah, I'm here. When we look, when we, I keep getting interrupted. I'm sorry. I'm getting a lot of messages on my phone. A lot of stuff is 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 um, pinging right now. Uh oh, it's. Um, but uh, the the there's a there's an allergenicity website, so you can you can plug in DNA sequences and you can see you know what what allergens you know could could be present in the DNA sequences that are used. Well, Oxitec hasn't released the DNA sequences or that other proprietary information with the OX5034. They keep learning as they they keep learning as they in as much as informing the public of certain things. So now they know what not to share and what not to tell us. For us to be educated, this is just completely 
completely off the chain. It's about to happen in the next week or two, and we don't even have a say in it. Yeah, it's just there's no transparency. I mean, that's the biggest thing I've noticed. And we have this issue with lots of topics. But with this one, it's like, I remember when the newscaster asked me during an interview, he said, you know, what do you hope? What do you hope to gain from doing this? You know, I crashed a GMO uh, presentation one time and shouted out at the end and made this big scene and the, the news interviewed me. So it actually worked. But he, he's like, what do you hope to accomplish? Like, what was the point? I'm like, I just need people to start talking about this. I was like, because when you go to the average person and you ask them, did you know that they're going to be releasing a mosquito genetically modified with X, Y, and Z in, in your backyard? Basically, they're like, what? No, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. And I know from speaking to people that they don't think that's a good idea, no matter how pro or anti GMO or Monsanto or Oxitec you are, it doesn't sound like a good idea. And then you just talked about how, you know, they're sneakily weaseling their way and passing referendums and keeping, finding out what to keep from us. I mean, you can't get any more lack of transparency than that. So it's just, it's unreal. And, and Dom, wonder, just to answer your question. Yes. Right. And, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but, and then they, and then they wonder why we don't trust them when they have their Oxitec webinar right. that are public engagement, so to speak, because they're required to do so. You, they, they don't answer the questions that they don't want to. They only answer certain questions. And then, and then, and then we're like, what was the point of that? That was an hour of my life that I'll never get back they still didn't answer my questions because you yeah. can't see, you don't have access to the questions or the chat that everyone's asking. That's hidden. So um, two of the biggest questions I've seen in the comment sections when I promoted this video uh, was, you know, the misconception about when they've been released. Can you just confirm that they have not officially, I'll say that because I know that yes, they could have done something in secret and not told anyone which would be very risky i think but they have not officially released any genetically modified mosquitoes in the united states is that correct my phone, uh, i'm sorry my again. phone's blowing up with messages Briefly, but you said you said <laughs> oh. i've got a, i've got a lot of friends who are who, oh it's okay who are um you know contributing to the dialogue and they're all telling me to say, you know, oh, well, what about this in Brazil and all of this? And, and, and the thing about this is, this is not about me. This is not about you, Justin. This is about all of us. And this is about everyone who's pinging me with messages right now that's, that's interrupting the stream. But everybody who's contributing to the dialogue, I mean, this is about all of us. And that's why it's so critical that we're all involved in the conversation. It's why it's so critical that we all are contributing our questions. We're all contacting Florida Keys Mosquito Control. We're all contacting yeah. Oxitec. And we're asking these questions because, and, and, and also sharing that, you know what, we want more science. We want the safety studies. We want more research. We don't want just the marketing narrative from Oxitec. We want third party independent science peer-reviewed science that's all we've ever asked for for the past 10 years is independent peer-reviewed science and they're not giving it to us and everything they've given us is a lie in their webinars they're saying that they were 98 percent effective in the caymans which is absolutely a falsehood and i have the emails to show it from the director the former director of the mosquito control unit and i can also tell you that the former director the, the former director of mosquito the Caymans is now hired by former mayor of Miami, Carlos Jimenez, who is now a, a senator. Uh, He's the former director of the Caymans experiment is now in Miami and he didn't pick Oxitec. He picked Wolbachia. He had the safer alternative. He had a full on experience with Oxitec and he had a full on opportunity here in the United States to be the first in the United States and to be published and to get famous as a scientist and a researcher and a mosquito guy. He had an opportunity in Miami Dade to go with Oxitec because he had the experience with them in the Caymans and he chose not right. to. Why is that? He's yeah, because he, he questions. saw. Yep. Well, it's just, there, there is, there's so much more we could unpack, I'm sure, with all the messages you're getting, because you could talk about the failed experiments in other countries. Um, but so just to be clear for everyone, um, you know, they, they chose Texas and Florida a long time ago. I'm getting a lot of people that are asking, oh my gosh, what a shocker. They chose Texas and Florida right when everybody is moving to these two states. But 
don't you agree that they sort of have had this plan in the works for about 10 years? So uh, why is Florida and Texas? Just because of the climates and the mosquitoes, most likely, right? I mean, yes, that's your that's your mo most likely. Answer. Right, right. Terry's the West Nile virus is in a more northern climate. It's a, it's a different mosquito. Uh, you know, clearly they're not going to be. You know, it's 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 localized to to this latitude. So this this zone, this this more um, tropical zone. So um, Houston, Texas, their elected officials opted to table this until after the pandemic. Our elected officials at Florida Keys Mosquito Control, on the other hand opted to push through with this despite clear vocal community opposition yeah. during a pandemic. The Florida Keys right now is just blanketed with signs and stickers and billboards opposed to the release of this experiment on us. In the next week or two, this is going to happen. And we've been talking about it. We've been trying. We've been trying everything to do this the right way. We've tried to avoid litigation. We've tried to, you know, we've tried to have all of these dialogues and conversations and we're being marginalized. We're being silenced. We're being um, dismissed. We're being disparaged in the community. I had someone literally scream at me over the phone from the Republican Club Committee last week in Marathon because I shouldn't have been at that meeting and all of these things, somebody, somebody else, um, and these are people who are in favor of the genetically modified mosquitoes. Um, I mean, people are, right. are, are, are disparaging our character because we're concerned about public health and the environment. That's our only agenda. We want more science. We're such bad people because we want more science and we want safety studies. Prove it's necessary, prove it's safe, show us some transparency, be honest. They have failed in all of those areas. And so there's, there is a uh, full justification for our concern and us being vocal. And, you know, I just have to give my hats off to you and Barry and Mila and Mara, everybody down there that's done such a great job, you know, fighting against this and then attending these meetings with the mosquito control, uh, the webinars, all of it, you know, the presentations and, but we need more help. We need people down there. Um, I know the keys is it's tough to get to drive down there. It's like another world. But if there's people in Miami, if you know people in South Florida, um, you, we, we need help, honestly. I mean, I remember attending a webinar and there was, you know, like one time it was like less than 10 people on there. And I'm like, this isn't going to do it. We really need more support. So I know that people can go to the Florida Keys Environmental Coalition Facebook group. And you said that all of these emails and documents can be found under the files tab, right? Yes. Okay. So that's a great place to go. Um, I know that stopgmm.com is where you can sign the petition. Um, what else can we do? I mean, sign the petition, go to that Facebook group and, and read up on the issue, inform others. But who should we be calling and emailing the most? Is it, is it, is it state people? Is it Nikki Fried? Is it your mosquito control district? Like what should people do to take action? Well, thank you, Justin. That's really a great segue into how we can turn this around if it's still possible at this time. We do need everyone's right. support. I do recommend that um, if folks are interested, please visit stopgmm.com. It's a very grassroots um, website and there's an interactive map where you can see all of the signs of, and, and all of the signs that are posted. You can request a sign or a sticker. Um, but basically, you can put yourself on this interactive map and you can see everyone that's opposed to this experiment on this website. You can oh, also great. read more information about it. There are action items. There's a petition you can sign and all of the um, uh, agencies and um, elected officials that are um, authorized to inflict this upon us. All of their information is on the website, so you can you can go there too. Um, I do recommend calling and emailing Florida Keys Mosquito Control. Um, it's keysmosquito.org is their website. Um, you know, I mean, all you have to do is a basic search engine search, you know, and, and Florida Keys Mosquito Control comes up and it contact us. So, you know, that it's not really high level of research to really just find this information and to do something about it. And we need everyone to get involved. 
to really just initiate some movement and, and you know, to care and to be motivated to do something about it. Call um, the Board of County Commissioners in the Florida Keys. Um, call, um, call and email um, the Department of Agriculture. The Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, um, that would be Nikki Freed's office. Absolutely call and email them and let them know that this is not acceptable. This is not okay. This has never been done before and we need more information. We need more studies. We need safety studies. And um, this is just an entirely new technology. It's an entirely different technology. These mosquitoes, <laughs> they used to be raised on horse blood. And so they have farms in, in England for this purpose where they, they, they suck the blood out of these live horses to feed these mosquitoes that they're gonna release all over the world. Now that was, oh, wow. yeah, so how, you know, you have to really research this stuff. You know, you can't just, oh, oh, wow, this sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. You know, right. I've heard that they're sterile males and it sounds like really good stuff. But I mean, that's where I started 10 years ago. It was like, wow, this sounds like a really great idea. And then I actually started to do the research and wow, um, I, I completely disagree with it. So until they change my mind, I, I am very much opposed to this. I have no way to opt out of this experiment. I've thought about relocating out of the Keys. I've thought about moving away. Um, I, I just, I, I live and work here. I've been here for 16 years. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the community. I contribute a lot. And this is not, this, this is not something that I would ever advocate for any community at this time. Yeah, and I think you said it best, you know, the biggest problem with this, uh, aside from everything we've discussed, was you can't opt out. You can't, like, they're about to, uh, what they were approved about a week ago, and they're, they're setting up the release right now. Like, they are actively looking for homes that are willing to put a box in their backyard with hundreds of millions of mosquitoes to hatch and just be released. So now all of your neighbors are part of this experiment. They have no say, they have no consent, and I guarantee they don't know what is in this mosquito that could potentially be biting them. Um, Technically, it was approved by the EPA in May 2020. I'm just going to stand corrected on the record okay. here. And then our Mosquito Control Board signed the contract after a vote on August 18th of 2020. So just let the record stand. But again, in a pandemic year with limited access to public meetings, people who have no technology, people who maybe have limited English proficiency, people who have mental disabilities, um, people who are hospitalized, people who have disabilities, people who have children, pets, anyone who could expose, be exposed to this, it is not okay. And I, I really do think everybody watching, you know, if, if you're if you're going to call and you're going to email mosquito control, if you're going to sign the petition, there's other things you can do, too. I think everybody can play a role. If you a heck reach out to me and ask me for the picture of the billboard and just share the billboard on your social media and say, look at what they're doing in the keys. We've got to stop this. Please share this or share some links to the petition with the picture of the billboard. Um, I think that we can all sound the alarm on this and do our each of us do a little part, even though you're not down there in the keys attending the meetings like yourself, you know, we can't all physically be there. So I think that we can all um, we can all find a place to, to do our part. Um, is there anything else that you want to uh, mention? Is there any other links for, for the people asking? I'm going to put in the comment section here, even in the description, I will put the Florida Keys Environmental Coalition group and I will put the uh, website for the petition. But is there anything else you want to link anywhere you want to point anybody? Well, I just want to finish by saying that we have nothing to gain by this. We're just protecting our public health and our environment. There's nothing in this for us. We have all dedicated years, hours, lifetimes away from our friends and families to be mosquito nerds and to try and help and contribute to our, our, our community by safeguarding public, public health and safeguarding our environment. We have invested so much of our own dollars out of our own pockets. We're not subsidized by any multinational corporation. We don't have our own lobbyists. It's just us. And we're just fighting this as best we can. And I have traveled on my own dime to Washington, D.C. to witness Oxitec lying to our Congress about whether or not female mosquitoes will be released. So, I, you know, I've been, you know, we have, we have this information. It's all documented. Um, please do visit stopgmm.com. There are additional links on there. Um, GMO Free Florida, of course, one of our best partners, 
um, GMO, free, oh. GMO Free USA, one of our best partners, also Friends of the Earth. Um, Dana Pearls out of um, Berkeley, California has been amazing. And there's a brief that they created that'll give you a breakdown. I mean, it's about four pages. I mean, it's a very highly technical subject, but you know, it's, it, they have a brief posted on their website, both in English and Spanish. And we have flyers both in English and Spanish so that people will have an idea of what's going on. Additionally, Center for Food Safety, JD Hansen in Washington, DC, he's just amazing. So there, I mean, we have, we have international partners, Gene Watch UK, um, you know, I mean, this is a British company and you've got Gene Watch UK speaking out against them. There's a, there's a documentary by Tamara Lane called Scratching the Surface. I recommend watching that. Um, that came out a long time ago. It's still relevant because they still haven't answered our community questions. They've still been failing everywhere they've been. And now they, they're, they're banking on us not knowing what's going on. They're banking on us not reading international articles about mosquito control. Yes, who does that? Are. Except, <laughs> you know, us they nerds on <laughs> with the target on our backs. <laughs> yeah, they've been as long as we're uninformed and running around blind as can be, then they can um, just slide this right under. It's no difference than passing um, sneaky bills through Congress on New Year's Eve. Or, they do things like this all the time, so it's no shock. Um, uh, so yeah, once again, I'm gonna be posting all of those links in the description. Um, and I guess the last thing I will ask you is, is there anything that we can sort of do to protect ourselves? Like, let's say you live in the Keys. Um, you know, I know that you, you, you mentioned, which I just learned this, that they're gonna be marked with fluorescent markers. So you'll actually be able to if you see a mosquito in question, you could actually hold a, a certain light up to it and be able to detect it because that's how they have them tagged. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so if you hold a fluorescent light up to it, the fluorescent marker should appear. And that's how you can differentiate the Oxitec mosquitoes from the wild mosquitoes. The trouble with that is that these fluorescent markers deteriorate over time and, and with each successive generation. So how they're gonna be able to keep track of these over successive generations is kind of a mystery. Um, the other thing I need to, to share real quick is that um, the contract, the contract between the, I'm sorry, hang on. The contract between, it's okay. The, 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 um, the contract between Oxitec and Florida Keys mosquito control in the objective, if you can read that, the objective is to track reproduction. The objective is not to reduce disease. The objective is not to reduce the number of mosquitoes. The objective is to track reproduction. Oh my god. Sterile mosquito. <laughs> oh, sterile. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense at all. It's horrible. <laughs> um, well, thank you again so much, um, Megan, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, just so everyone knows, this will be posted on my IGTV. Um, you can find me, Justin, we are change with an underscore under every word. Um, be sure to follow Megan if you'd like to. She's always posting great articles and the most up-to-date uh, genetically modified mosquito stuff. And um, yeah, also post this to the We Are Change Orlando YouTube. Um, you know, feel free, please share this video. If not, help us share these billboard graphics and some of these petitions and get the word out there. Thank you. I'm not a professional Oxitec hater. You know, they would paint me as otherwise, you know, but it, it's just, I'm just a normal person who's just actually reading about what's happening and what's going on. And I care very much. And everybody out there, everybody watching, um, can also learn. Oh, I may have lost her. Yeah, it looks like she dropped out, but it's okay. Um, we're, we're pretty much done anyway. Anything that she's going to add, I will put in the description. Um, if you all have any additional questions, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, and please do what you can to help us in this fight, and um, we will keep at it. Hopefully, we can still get this experiment stopped, even though it's been approved. Um, you never know. We, we get this, this company exposed or get a whistleblower or who knows, maybe somebody chains themselves to the, to the Oxitec doors. <laughs> I'm not encouraging that, but um, if you do make enough of a stink, uh, public pressure adds more weight than you can imagine. So thank you all so much for watching. Remember, we are not mosquito experts. We are regular people that don't want to be guinea pigs. We don't want this uh, experiment going on in our backyard. 
And when the company is consistently lying and refusing to have any transparency, we have every right to uh, raise the alarm and oppose this experiment. So again, thank you all so much.